Hey there folks, Lane here with Windows10Update.com and today we're going to be exploring what is new in the Windows 10 Fall Update. Now if you are an Insider Preview member, there won't be anything new for you here, assuming you are on the build 10586. That is the build that is going out to everyone as the Fall Update. So that is the latest build that is currently available in both Fast and the Slow Ring. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's new. So in the start menu, if we start there, uh, there is now the option to have four columns of medium tiles, whereas in the past you could only have three. And you can find that additional option under the settings application, personalization, and then start. So you just tick this on to show more tiles. So that is new. In addition, there are some improved context menus which match the Windows 10 theme, which is nice. And there are icons in the resize menu here that actually show you what the tile will look like after you resize it. So that's nice and very helpful. In addition, in the past there was a limit of 512 live tiles in the start menu and that has been increased to 2048. Now there is also better support for tablets in this build. So in, in the past, if you were to go ahead and go into the task view, you can select between two applications or you know however many applications you have open in the task view, but there was no way to snap an application from that view. Now, if you go ahead and just hold, click and hold, or if you're using your finger, obviously just press and hold and then dry, drag that application over to the side, then you have the option to go ahead and snap it. And then of course you can resize. Now if I were to go and open another application, let's say I open the calculator here, it actually goes into this teetering mode where you have to kind of choose which side it goes on. So you can either click and drag or you can just press on whichever side you want to snap it to. Uh, this is still a little bit deficient compared to Windows 8.1 because we still don't have the option to snap three applications even on very high resolution screens. So that's kind of disappointing, but uh, hopefully that feature will make it back at some point. And now, just like in Windows 8.1, you can drag an application down to the bottom of the screen. Let me go into task view here. You can drag an application down to the bottom of the screen to go ahead and close it. So that is new and improved here as well. Now, when you are in tablet mode, as you know, you can uh, kind of resize these applications dynamically by grabbing this slider here and moving things around. That has also made its way to the desktop now. So if I exit tablet mode here, you can see these two applications are in the same configuration that they were in the tablet mode. And for some reason, it will not work for me when I'm recording the screen. But under normal circumstances, when you go ahead and hover over this uh, line here, um, you'd be able to actually resize both of the applications at the same time. So again, that is not working for me when I'm recording the screen for some reason. I've had that issue since this uh, feature first came became available. But uh, So that does work under normal circumstances. Uh, it is something that you have to turn on in the settings, um, but that option is not working for me now. Now, a couple of other additions to the uh, to the desktop experience, there are some new visual details like a new right-click menu. So this is not everywhere, as you can see. These are still the old right-click menus here. But in a lot of different places, these right-click menus have been updated so that they are themed properly for Windows 10. So that is very nice. Now, in addition, there are also now themed title bars. So in the past, these title bars for these applications would be themed uh, but not exactly to the same color that you had chosen in your preferences. So now there's this new darker color. So it actually is the exact same color as the live tile tiles, whereas in the past it was kind of faded out a little bit. Another new visual detail for the desktop here is that these universal apps or these you know touch touch first apps that you get from the Windows Store now have animations when you close them. So let's go ahead and close the news application and you can see that animation. So those animations were not there in the past. That is something that is brand new. So that's also a nice addition. Now Cortana has also been improved as well. There are a couple of new additions there. So if I go ahead and open Cortana here and go to Reminders, 
there is now the option for me to go ahead and create a reminder with a note. So I'm on a Surface Pro 4 here, so I could actually click here and then I can take handwritten notes. Um, so Cortana will attempt to understand your handwriting to see what you wanna do there. So if I wanted to create a reminder with somebody's name in here, time and date, etc., it would be able to recognize those things and then save that as a reminder. And now Cortana will also scan your email for your tracking numbers and your flight information and then put that right into your uh, home section. So you'll be able to see that information there. I don't have any tracking numbers in my email right now, so that's not something that's showing up, but that is something that is working now. Now Cortana will also remind you of missed calls either on Windows Phone, Android, or potentially iOS, I haven't had a chance to test that myself. iOS does have Cortana in beta now, but I can confirm it is working on Android and Windows Phone. Now, in addition, Cortana can send Skype messages and SMS messages, both on Android and on Windows Phone. So that isn't a feature that I have seen, you know, talked about in other places, but that is something that is working for me, even on Android, which is kind of unique because the new messaging app, which we'll talk about in a little bit, this still does not have the option to send SMS messages, but Cortana can do that for you. I have noticed it does take a few minutes for those messages to go through for some reason, though. All right, now let's talk about new settings. So let's go ahead and open the settings application here, there are some new things in here. If we go to system and then power and sleep, there's now a new option to save power when Cortana knows I'm away. Um, so that's nice. And then in addition, we have, if we go to system and then storage, it's now possible to save applications to other drives like an SD card. I don't have an SD card attached right now, but if I did, I would have the option to go ahead and save new apps that I download from the Windows Store to that location. Next, if we go to personalization and then lock screen, you can now turn off the Windows background picture on sign-in. So the Windows Hero picture typically always shows on your sign-in screen. You can now turn that off and it's just gonna show your theme color on that screen now. In addition, let's go ahead over to accounts. It is now possible to add accounts email accounts, calendars, contacts, etc., from the settings application. So you don't have to do that from the people app or from the email or calendar apps. Next, if we go ahead into privacy, see there is a new section here for call history. Since Cortana is now capturing that data, you can go ahead and turn this off so that apps do not have access to your call history. And the same goes for your email history. All right, now let's talk about Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge has significantly improved since the last time this was used. So tab previews are now finally working. Um, this was not available to people not in the Insider program in the past. And even those that were using it in the past, this was not really working very well. And there would just be a black box instead of actually showing a preview of what was in that tab. So that has been improved and that is working very well. I'm also noticing a much better uh, you know, stability within Microsoft Edge. In the past, I really couldn't use it um, professionally because I would lose information. Switching between tabs would cause them to reload. I'm happy to report I am not having that issue any longer. So that's great. It's now also possible if you were to go to a YouTube video, a Facebook photo album, a Pandora playlist, etc. It's now possible to cast that media to another device like a Roku or an Xbox One. Um, different, definitely, that's a nice feature to have. It's now uh, also possible to sync passwords, bookmarks, and reading list items across different devices that are using Microsoft Edge. So that is very helpful as well. Uh, now, browser extensions are not here yet, but those will be coming probably sometime early in 2016. Okay, let's go ahead and explore the new apps. There are a couple of new apps in this new fall update here. So specifically, there are Skype messaging and video applications. So we have Skype video here. I don't wanna go ahead and launch these applications to have personal information in them, but there's a Skype video application which basically just gives you the option to make video calls and phone calls um, from Skype, it is exactly what you would expect. And then Skype messaging allows you to send messages, specifically Skype messages. So this is Microsoft's, you know, essentially their answer to iMessage. And eventually, 
SMS messages from your phone, at least Windows Phone, hopefully Android as well, will go ahead and sync across your different devices into that Skype messaging app. So you can send SMS, SMS messages from your PC. So that is an, a nice feature. That SMS feature is not here yet, but it is at least possible now to send Skype messages from that application. Now, in addition to everything that we have talked about, there are some new icons scattered around the operating system in different places. Um, none of them provide major visual updates. There are still some things that we're waiting for. Really, the file explorer is uh, looking pretty dated right now. Uh, as well, the control panel is looking pretty dated. So there are still some visual details which are not lined up with Windows 10's overall theme yet, uh, but we are definitely getting closer here. So that is everything that is new in this Windows 10 update for the fall of 2015 here. Uh, if there's anything we missed, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.